Welcome to Truck You Podcast, guys. My name is Jose. My name is Sebastian. How you doing, brother? You good. Pretty good. How are you doing? Good, man. Good. Yeah. Glad to be back. It, uh, we've been away for a little bit. Yeah, we've been away. Why? Busy. Do you want to say why? Really busy. Um, winter, you know how that goes. Bunch of breakdowns. Freeze-ups, ma- mainly. Trying to stay on top of it. Yeah. Uh, what are we talking about today? So today would be uh, emissions and gliders. Why did you go with that option when purchasing trucks or why why do you love them so much yeah and what did i see, what did i see on the market market right uh there's been some i've been looking at some stuff but yeah we're going to talk about that so what do you what's the update on the shop what have we have we had anything interesting going on uh right now well we got that uh d13 with that idler gear situation it was a leaking uh bell housing so we're resealing that right now uh we're waiting on a couple parts for an overhaul we do have a video with a D13 uh, D13 yeah. coming out. Uh, I don't know when, probably next week, but we did shoot a little video about this. Uh, we do have the gliders right now. We're, they're uh, getting prepped or looking over them. My favorite Pro Star is here. That's what I was going to tell you. We've got the Max Force. We've got a good mix in the house today. My favorite engine lately. <laughs> How's it been running so far? I mean, it's been... Uh, uh, other than burning the coolant, you mean? <laughs> that's the only issue, I think, right? Yeah. And definitely something that w- it's a little loud over here uh but you guys know we're we're at the shop so so let's talk about what so you were looking for how many trucks or i mean obviously you're still looking for them right you mm-hmm. you want to keep the the fleet growing uh well uh, those are more of a replacement i would say okay uh of course i want to you know expand but it's more about its time i got caught with the number one reason is so, uh, we still run some of the D12s. Uh, we have few of them left, and I have few of them for sale, which I, I haven't. We didn't. We haven't done any prep yet to get them uh, up to speed with for sale. They were just sitting, so we're going to do that. But I would say um, it's interesting. I <coughs> I didn't want to be in the situation, as you know. We've taught. We've bought pre. Um, pre spike in prices we bought a decent amount of trucks but and i was like okay well i want to make a good decision i want to buy something i know the market's low that's why <clears throat> when i bought we bought like i don't know 30 of them i guess um over the first quarter of 2021 and i'm like okay i'm, I'm good now but then i'm like no you know what i need me to swap a little bit more and i started looking so what i've seen to be honest with you is a couple things that the, p- the prices seem to be for new trucks the th- the zero to three years the three to five <coughs> the prices seem to be going up and up and I've looked at f- few of them and the number one thing is like I know I bought those gliders from Poly right I, we, I bought four trucks total uh, one is a Pro Star do you another know another Pro Star <laughs> Which we can talk about that when, why I want, what and what's in it. Well, I bought it because uh, I want to run it on rails and it's a uh, Cummins and the drivers like it. What year is that one? That's uh, 16. 16? Okay. Mm-hmm. So if drivers like it, I have a couple of guys that don't want to give out those D12s, but I w- I'll make them d- drive something like this. Very okay. They can, this is this has been doing fine. The Max Force is doing fine other than burning the coolant, which... Have you looked at it or no? No, I haven't, no. So, unfortunately, I mean, I know you love your D12 so much and, you know, they're mm-hmm. bulletproof engines, but uh, you got to say it's time to let them go yeah. and up- upgrade the fleet, right? 100%. Yeah. It's, there's m- multiple reasons. They're still worth something that people still can use them. Um, I just I just want to have drivers. Um, Comfortability? Yeah. Some some guys don't want to give them give him out. That's the thing. Like I have the decent amount of guys. No, don't don't touch. Don't take my truck. But it's fine. And the gliders. I got three gliders and the Cummins and the three gliders. There's two Pete's three eighty six and then one is uh, Columbia, which I bought sight unseen and I shouldn't have done that. Uh, but that's fine. <laughs> it's just uh, it's just not in the condition I would buy it. Okay. Uh, but it's fine. I'll make it work. And then a lesson learned for me. And then the the pizza are nice. The pizza are very nice. So that's I'm very happy with those. Uh, we already have probably assigned one is assigned for sure. The other one I'm not so sure who's gonna get that. It's gonna go OTR. 
So when you went for the pizza or gliders overall, like what were you looking at? What were your options out there in the market? I looked at a few Volvos and uh, I did a video. Uh, it's on a channel about the the two that I saw. I didn't, I looked at, I briefly ran through one, uh, like a private seller and I, I just only did it was, I saw a sign. So I stopped and looked at it. Uh, he was asking way too much. It was 15 D 13. Um, I, I shift. And then, um, I looked at those two DOT that were, they're not DOT trucks. They were some other, um, trucks that somebody specced with the dead axle in the back and they oh, had okay. yeah so it's fine for otr i would say i would totally make it work but the price well you don't think so no because i mean how about like uh loading at a dock and then you know the guy slips out you know how we had scenarios like that then you need yeah. that power divider lock yeah but the c like with our experience i don't know if i mean i've drew I don't know if it's it's I think it's actually worth getting rid of that headache because I don't think drivers use it a lot of times and or it's only accidentally it, lock yeah, it or forget especially it. yeah you accidentally uh, have it on Leave but it at on. the same time you are rarely using it it's expensive to fix but at the same time maybe with the new ones it makes sense obviously but with older ones with higher mileage ones yeah. you don't know what's sitting in there no. You know what I mean? So maybe that maybe that's a little bit more justifiable is like if you have a higher mileage truck and it doesn't have that power divider, then you're at least eliminating that issue because you want to touch on if your power divider goes out, what do you need to do just so they know what we're talking about? If you have a $700,000, uh, 700,000 mile truck and your power divider goes out, how, how expensive it is. And, and you're looking at tow, a tow bill for sure, because you're not going to be able to roll yeah. the truck. Yeah, there are, you yeah, know, yeah. A couple. And parts wash, I'd say what, fifteen hundred easily plus downtime, plus downtime, plus uh, press parts availability. But at the same time, if you like, you you can't swap an axle. You have to make sure you're staying within the ratios that Ratio. you had. Yeah. So you know, it might be a little bit of headache. Definitely, it's a downtime. So the higher mileage trucks can cause. You know, maybe it makes more sense. But anyway. Uh, and they needed a lot of work. The price totally like mid sixties. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't. And the mileage was at what? Uh, Five fifty. So the mileage was good. Yeah. But it needed to be addressed. Like if it was addressed, I could live with it. But it needed to be addressed, and I was additional, like solid thousands of dollars to get this get this thing get it rolling. Going, yeah. Um, and that's not counting like the emissions. Who knows how that was kept up with, right? Yeah. So then I, uh, yeah, Polly had some trucks and I was like, hey, I need, I need some units to replace. And um, I went to see him. I, I like those that had uh, those speeds have rebuilt uh, Detroit Series 60 in them. Uh, Pittsburgh Power did it. So they're aw awesome shops. So we. So is that the only, like, Polly is like 294 is your only go to for gliders? Or did have you tried shopping around anywhere I've, else? For I gliders? started, I yeah, did, yeah. I did. And um, he, he has, I would say, he has competitive prices and there are sh there are definitely uh, sellers of gliders and i it seems like they're in the same with the, within the same range convenience is important to me and i know you know they they take care of they clean the detail the trucks and they they prep it and they do a good job and um i don't i don't want to deal with a uh, shipping go and pick it up like having that's, somebody that's go pick cost, it up yeah. yeah it's just you know um Plus, like I trust him with telling me what what the trucks are coming from. If I'm buying from somebody else, I don't know what the, what the you know what the truck comes. What from. kind of maintenance ahead? Yeah, yeah. So that was uh, that was fun, and I, to be honest with you, I really like that 386. I had my kids over here, were like just like driving around the shop, and I haven't. Well, we drove it from the shop, which we have a video. We didn't do it yet, but uh, we'll, we'll post that video too. But it's so they're they're comfortable to drive there's they're fun to drive you got know. good room good ride yeah um what do you think about the hood though you got a good view from the inside yeah 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 for as a as as my experience previously i mean at, for a single guy this truck is good you know what i mean team driving uh no. you don't got the room no the sleeper is a decent size but it's a it's designed for a single a guy mid roof sure. yeah those are 10 speeds um 12.7 
uh, 355s, I think. I don't even, I haven't, I didn't double check the ratios, but I'm assuming that's what it is. That's what they, that's how they built them. Um, I think they both have APUs, right? I'm not too sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, so I'm happy with this and we are, I'm still looking. And the best, the most important aspect to this is that you can still get financing for them. And banks have so much money right now that they'll finance anything. So that's, that's not an issue? No. Okay. And, and, you know, we'll get to some questions in a little bit, but I, I can tell you that I've seen, you know, the debates in our group and our owner operator forum group. So if you guys haven't seen it, join, join our group on Facebook, owner operator forum. And we've been talking about, you know, it's like the, the, the endless question of the way I finance by cash, blah, blah, blah. Right. So, uh, to me, buying lighters and, having them still be financed is like buying a classic truck that somebody's gonna else whip out the money for and you just have to make sure um you, you know you're buying the right truck obviously you can still buy a, a lemon glider kit yeah right so but i would say the the cost of buying a lemon glider kit is so much less than buying a lemon uh emission emission truck yeah. then you know, well even if you have to overhaul that engine you know it's still it's still worth it, I guess. Yeah, definitely. Right. Well, now going on, since you touched base with the financing, um, uh, within what time frame do you see? Do you plan on seeing profits from buying those gliders? Like, do you plan on seeing uh, the truck being paid off or? No, I I don't look at it like that you because there are other it? no because there's other like as long as obviously the truck's producing revenue and the way you're looking at you know like the finance the cost right now like I think you can get if you have good credit it's like six percent which which isn't For bad commercial that's good yeah um, and I've you know I've seen sixes I've seen eights uh, I mean sixes seems to be the standard I think even lower if you're buying a newer truck okay. um, you know emission truck. So the way this, the way it works, I'm they're gonna make money. Obviously, this as soon as they get out. But the market is pretty good right now. So the the only question is, like the the way I look at this is, when I bought this, uh, I I'm gonna keep them, right? All the gliders we have can be almost rebuilt, you know, every four or five years, and as long as they're they're gonna be uh, allowed on the road, I'm gonna keep using them. And, you know, like, I've changed how I look at this because we, we, you can't find all those D13s that make sense financially. I would rather pay more for a truck if the market's hot, that's a glider, than a D13. Which you, is what you did you, in this scenario. Yeah, you yeah. know, what, that's pretty much why, why I look at it that way. Because I, I didn't want to be in this situation where I have to swap units when the market is hot, right? But if I, if I am, then, then this is why I'm doing this. Because... I know that I'll try to make sure that the financing is a, as, as best as possible. And what I mean by that is you'll hear a lot of times, well, we'll only do it for three years, for two, three years. Uh, or Well, usually it's three years, right? They, they don't want to do it longer on a used truck like that with okay. so much, with, with, you know, Mileage. Uh, being 2015. And, well, you can ask, what the, if your financials are correct, you can ask it for, to extend it. And then they would tell you, why would you extend it? Well, you would extend it because... I want to have the 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 way you want to structure the loan is for you for you for somebody else obviously have that full um, whip out the money for it and you having the least amount of payment based on um, the uh, interest rate. I want it to be as low as possible. I know I'm going to keep those trucks. If I was buying you know something new, we would, that would be three year. Then you're putting it, you're selling it, but those gliders I would want I'm going to keep them as long as possible so if I can extend and lower the payment for as long as possible that's that's a win-win for yeah, me yeah definitely you know uh, and it did I did that actually because they, they weren't going to I the way I financed it is like it's costing me like literally I don't know like f maybe 1500 bucks a, a month okay you know what I mean so try to buy something right now that's going to cost you Do that much that's actually that actually Reliable. makes sense yeah because I bought multiple units so it's like a bundle thing but um, and that's why I feel that, you know, for what I had to do with the trucks that we had to replace, I think it was a good buy. It's not, you know, I'm confident in those gliders, even if we have to rebuild it, I'm not, I'm not worried, but we, we've yet to see the mileage, the fuel mileage yeah. on this. I don't know. So once those trucks leave, we, we both know that they're, 
zero downtime on them. Uh, yeah. Like we have our, another one. I think it's like 41. Once that truck leaves, we are, we hardly ever see them back here. None, until it's none of those gliders, gliders that we have. It's so it's like I have to tell Rich to make sure he revisits every week to, hey, I, I got to see that truck because our fleet supervisor, because he, uh, he will forget about them. And they're not, I mean, right now winning. I think we have, I don't know, 15 or 17 of those. And yeah. it's like, you, it's like you, you have to check, check in what's going on with them. Cause drivers, you know, they are, they, one day they'll check oil, oil the other day they won't. Yeah. Luckily some Sarah actually pulls the information, um, from it. So, so we can, we can kind of monitor, you know, remotely, but, um, I'm excited to be honest with you. I, I would, you know, the only thing is the chassis, like buying pizza. We don't have a dealership here, so it's it's going to take a little bit longer to get like the components for it. But I can deal with it if it's if it's a glider. You know, we just got to add to our stock pretty much, right? Yeah, that's all. Yeah. What have you? What's your experience with three eighty sixes? Um, I did work on them for a good period of time. Mm. You really don't have much experience. <laughs> I did. Uh what i didn't like was a uh, wiper motors you know that's yeah that's really uh uncomfortable those headlight harness okay, that i mentioned yeah because yeah, the shop you, you told me they had that they had a fleet of them right yeah besides that i mean you do have some uh oh that's a really common peterbilt and, and kenworth thing the fuse boxes uh they like to get corroded oh i think you told me about that now yeah so that is an issue that we we might be coming across hopefully not is it the same uh same layout. location same layout yeah really? same layout and the brakes the brake pedal sometimes seizes up and is yeah the brake pedal does seize up when you drive the did you drive the black one or the blue one i the drove back? the blue one have, how was the pedal when we were driving it it was uh sticking a little bit right yeah. did yes. you notice that the, the travel was very short yeah i don't know if that has to do with i haven't looked out how it's it's i haven't seen that the way it's uh, why it's doing it so there's my, a there is a pin that uh mounts to that foot valve mm -hmm, on the floor mm -hmm. and that seizes up since all the salt all everything it just corrodes it and it like to seize up so you gotta every now and then take out that pin put on the wire brush and anti-season it's good okay cool yeah we'll go go through them and uh we're getting them ready right now for drivers but yeah uh you want to get to the questions let's get to the yeah. questions we have we have some questions coming in um Liz is coming into town um, into town next week so i'm excited we're gonna do a podcast with her okay good and uh, maybe rick together just like a four uh team uh, so a couple of questions we have uh, from you guys. Rel McLean. Uh, hello, where can I find the specs for the height my leveling valve should be at? Recently changed my second axle, first drive, and now getting a vibration at 65 and higher when, when lining up on the accelerator. Usually the spec is 39, 39 and a half, but all across. Uh, what, what kind of... He didn't, he didn't say. He didn't say. No. But where is there? Uh, is it? Is it? Is it across? You or? would be able to find it online on the, uh, through the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. That's what we did with uh, Firelander mm -hmm. when we had that issue on. Yeah. So online manufacturer website. Just look up um, what they're what they're saying. It's 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 there. We found for a couple of months yeah, for did. us. Uh, Chad Mohammed. Uh, Sebastian and other members uh, starting my um, starting my truck search here in Chicago. Uh, any advice on where to start? I want to bring it to the shop for a pre-purchase inspection. <clears throat> any advice would be greatly appreciated. Quick advice on that. Uh, we've addressed it multiple times. Chad, just keep in mind it is it is a crazy market right now and anything else you, you should have a sharp kind of be aware of. Try to do as much homework as possible and come go prepped look at a truck just don't look at anything and pull the trigger i guess um it's yeah there's a lot of stuff out there that's just doesn't make sense and uh depending on what you want that you didn't specify but are you financing or buying cash that's also important we had a debate uh at some point in the group about buying cash or you know all the advice everybody has different uh different opinion and their own subjective kind of opinion about specific things and always they always the way i always said is like i need to know all the details to be able to help somebody with, yeah. with that you know whether you're like what's your financial, financial situation yeah. um there's a lot of things in common. maybe we could do an, we could do maybe a podcast based on hey this is what you should look at and how or or even help some guys you know on the on 
on the podcast um, buy some trucks but be aware uh, that there's a lot of garbage there right now and uh, come prep just do a lot of homework and research uh, Faisal is asking where can I find a Coronado glider kit uh, Detroit 12.7 um, Polly has some look him up i-294 truck sales and just uh truck paper look up uh, and facebook market to be honest with you they show up too i've found some uh, 14 liter coronados that uh showed up and had some decent pricing but uh the 14 liter is something i would i could pro- we could recommend that right yeah definitely Good motor uh, but since it's a coronado obviously the price is going to be a lot higher than than these peats or columbus i would say you think so? I would Definitely so. higher than Columbia, but Columbia. I wouldn't say Pete. You wouldn't say higher did, than... Did Pete's kit come... Uh, what model was with 14 liter Detroit? That would be... It would have to be like a 370... Oof. No, I could be wrong. There, I know. I mean, because it's the, it's the pre-2008... Uh, three... So it would have to be the 379, because the 389 yeah. came on a- after. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Um... Bob, Quentin, uh, getting ready to buy new drive tires for my 05 Pete. I run OTR. What tires do you guys run? Interesting. That was a that was a question to the group. Uh, we run um, the muscle power. Seems to be on the drive okay. tires. Yeah. yeah, yeah, on the drives. Uh, steers. I usually do something like um, you know Bridgestone or something. Um, what did we buy? Um, Kum- we got some Kumos for steers, right? Uh, Kumos, and I think we had some Hankooks coming in. <clears throat> yeah but uh, the dry uh, as far as drives the muscle power is pretty good i mean we we have an application of a, more of a regional some but i since i bought a lot of them i just put it on the otr truck so i i don't see i don't see any problems with them so far we did have what was the brand that we had before that was kind of whatever that we i didn't like it it was like some thailand brand that it was yeah. like going through really quick yeah we were and the the pattern was kind of weird too but um okay john crook well, I'm, I'm i apologize if i misspelled your last name uh comments isx uh 12 425 horsepower 2015 is this a good engine has or is there anyone used or using this engine that's also from our group uh comments isx 425 horsepower 2015 but they're all 40, 50 liters. I don't know why he's at 12. Uh, they do have, uh, they 12, have a 12 they li- do. liters, but I'm thinking... Those were 11 nines. That's what they call them. Yeah, but that's but wouldn't that be... Um, I don't... I've never... I didn't, I never had a truck with a 12 liter ISX. I worked on maybe like five of them. Nothing yeah. crazy. What do you think? Is it, is it a good, good motor? I would definitely take it to a dyno. I mean, before you purchase it, take it for a dyno, check the compression, and uh, you know, see what the numbers read. And it's a 15, so look at the emissions. But yeah, the engines. I mean, Cummins has. You know, I mean, there's so many. If it's if if the 12 is anything like the 15, is uh, it's just the oil consumption is probably that's the biggest about issue. it that you might come across. Yeah. Um, that's it. That's that's all we got. What else? You want to close it out? Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you for stopping by and uh, subscribe, share, and we'll talk to you soon.